Hello, this is Dr. Macaluso, and we are going to get started by talking about how we organize data. So in statistics, when we are talking about data, we are talking about all of the material that we can analyze. And so before we can start actually getting into the data, we have to talk about how we're going to collect that data um, and what units we're going to be analyzing and also our levels of measurement. So let's start with some basics. This might be uh, familiar to you from a research methods class if you took one, or it might be new. Um, but let's start with these ideas of population, elements, and units of analysis. To start with, a population is the set of all of the elements that a researcher wants to know something about. And an element is just a single entity of the population. So the population is everyone or everything that we want to know about. And the element is the individual piece within that population. And the unit of analysis is the specific entity that the researcher wants to know something about. Um, so let's go ahead and do some examples. Um, we have three uh, research questions here. The first research question is, are younger people more likely to experiment with illegal drug use than older people? So here, our unit of analysis is dealing with the individual unit that we want to know about. So what is the kind of smallest unit that we're looking at? And here, we're looking at people. So we're looking at individuals, younger people versus older people. So people or individual is our unit of analysis. In our second example here, we say, are women more likely than men to be religious? And what we're looking at is, who are we, who or what are we comparing? So here, we're comparing women to men. So the unit is individual. We're looking at individual women and individual men. And we are looking at who is likely to be more religious. So the unit of analysis, again, is individual. Our last one here gets a little more complicated. So it says, are schools in poorer neighborhoods more prone to violence than schools in wealthier neighborhoods? So here we're looking at what are we comparing? We're comparing different types of schools, right? So we're comparing schools and we're saying uh, that the demographics around the school, so poorer neighborhood, wealthier neighborhood, and that that's connected to the violence in the school, or the rate of violence um, that is a statistic of the school. So we're comparing two different types of schools to one another. Um, and so our unit of analysis there is school. So as you can see, a unit of analysis is oftentimes individuals, but as sociologists, our units of analysis can also be organizations, groups, um, they can be societies, countries, states. There are lots of different things that can be units of analysis. But ultimately, what you're looking for is that individual piece that you are making comparisons of. So what is that individual level um, item that you are making a comparison of? Um, so that's units of analysis. So in addition to units of analysis, we also have to identify variables. So a variable is any aspect of a unit of analysis that can vary from one unit to the next. So variables, anything that can change. So let's think about some examples of variables if the unit of analysis is individuals. So if our unit of analysis is individuals or people, then what are some things that vary from person to person? Go ahead and take a second and think about that and maybe jot down a couple of notes. So some of the examples that I think of are level of education, uh, gender, age, race. All of those are things that can vary. So um, those and those are things that vary based on the individual. They change from person to person. So what if the unit of analysis is neighborhood? What are some characteristics of neighborhoods or aspects of neighborhoods that vary from neighborhood to neighborhood? What about neighborhoods like University Hills across the street from ACU as compared to maybe um, the uh, neighborhood behind Hendrick Hospital, uh, which is a lower income neighborhood? So what are some things that could vary from neighborhood to neighborhood? Well, number of houses, um, the size of houses, 
property taxes, uh, you know, housing styles or types, crime rates in the neighborhood, um, poverty rates in the neighborhood, all of those are variables, things that can vary from neighborhood to neighborhood. And then lastly, I have on here, what about cities? What are some variables for different cities? So here I want you to write this down and I want you to uh, come to class on Thursday ready to talk about variables in the city. So we have these variables or things that can vary from person to person or unit to unit. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to do in statistics is understand the relationship between these different variables. And so one way to express that relationship is through a hypothesis. So a hypothesis expresses what you predict the relationship is between at least two variables. Now hypotheses can be written a lot of different ways, but in this class we're going to stick to a simple if-then statement. So you're going to say if something happens, then this will happen or if something changes, then this. So if variable, then variable. Um, that's gonna be the model that we use uh, when we're talking about hypotheses in this class. So let's write some hypotheses. So let's start with these three uh, research questions that we were talking about, and let's turn and change them from a question to a statement. So remember, our hypothesis is some sort of prediction. So let's start with the first one. Are younger people more likely to experiment with illegal drug use than older people? So first we need to identify our variables. So our variables here are going to be age and illegal drug use. So age, because we're talking about younger people versus older people, so we're comparing the age of these people, the units, um, and then illegal drug use, because that's the other thing we're making a comparison of. So here, the independent variable is going to be age. Age comes before the drug use. Um, and so we're going to say, if you are younger, then you are more likely to experiment with illegal drugs. Now, it doesn't have to be if you are younger. You can switch it around. You could say, if you are older, then you are more likely to experiment with illegal drug use. Or you could say if you are younger, then you are less likely to experiment with illegal drug use. There are different ways that you can phrase this. Um, in real research, we would base our hypotheses on the literature review and the prior research that we had done. But since we're kind of skipping that step in this class, um, you just can base your hypothesis off of common sense knowledge and what you know about the social world. All right, what about the second one? What kind of a hypothesis would we write for this? Are women more likely than men to be religious? I'll give you a second to think about that. All right, so first let's identify the variables. The first variable is gender. Is the person a woman or a man? The second variable here is are, how religious are they? So our independent variable is gender. And our dependent variable is how religious are you? So we would say, if you are a woman, then you are more likely to be religious. All right, how about this last one? Are schools in poor neighborhoods more prone to violence than schools in wealthier neighborhoods? I want you to write that down and be ready to talk about that in class on Thursday. All right, so I've already mentioned independent and dependent variables, um, but let's go into these a little more in depth. So we have two types of variables, and these are, again, things that can vary or change from unit to unit uh, in our research. So there are the two types that we're going to be focusing on are independent variables and dependent variables. So independent variables are those variables that stand alone. These are the variables that come first in your research, or these are the variables that we're saying have an effect on something else, where a dependent variable depends on the independent variable. So we say that a dependent variable is the one that is being affected. So the independent variable comes first and has some sort of an effect 
on the dependent variable. So when we're looking at our examples, the first one, are younger people more likely to experiment with illegal drug use than older people? We've already identified these variables, but our variables here are age and illegal drug use. And our independent variable is age, because we're saying that age is going to have an effect on illegal drug use. Now, if you think about this logically, it can't really go the other way. Illegal drug use can't affect your age um, numerically. It might make you appear older, so maybe your social age or your appearance of age might change, but your actual chronological age cannot change. So age has to be the independent variable. It has to come first logically and chronologically. Um, on the second question here, are women more likely than, women, than men to be religious? We have those two variables of gender and how religious someone is. So here we have a similar situation where gender has to come first uh, because gender is established long before your religiosity, especially if we're talking about the religiosity of adults. So gender is your independent variable, and we're saying that it is going to have an effect on your dependent variable. Um, which is how religious you are. Our third one here, are schools in poorer neighborhoods more prone to violence than schools in wealthier neighborhoods? So here are two characteristics that we're looking at are the income of the neighborhood um, that the school is located in and the rate of violence in the schools. And so here we're saying that the wealth of the neighborhood, if it's poor or wealthy, has an effect on violence in the school. So here, the wealth of the neighborhood is your independent variable, and the level of violence is the dependent variable. So things to keep in mind. How do we know? Well, there are some keys that you can look for. And the first thing to look at is, what is the logic of the relationship between the variables? Um, think about it in a logical way. What makes sense? Does it make sense that drug use could affect age? Does it make sense that really a geosity could change your gender? Think about the logic of that relationship. Then you can also think about time. Think about which one of these things chronologically has to come first. Um, and so in our third example of schools, um, the wealth in the neighborhood typically comes first before violence in the school. You don't generally see a school become violent and then as a result the neighborhood gets poor. Um, typically we see the opposite. So think about that time order. And then lastly is something that we can think about ascribed or achieved characteristics. So ascribed characteristics are those things that you're kind of born with or that have always been in existence. And achieved characteristics are those things that you achieve, that you earn. So ascribed characteristics are things like race, sex, age. Um, those are things that you can't change or location of a school in our third example. So ascribed characteristics have to come first. They have to come before the achieved characteristics. The achieved characteristics are things that can be added later or can change. Um, in a much easier way. So things like educational achievement um, or juvenile delinquency or um, you know preferences for different things. So that's another thing that you can keep in mind to help you understand which variable is the independent variable and which variable is the dependent variable.